back to Simplest Gourmet. I'm Hillary. And I'm Travis. And today we're going to show you how to make homemade sauerkraut. It's one of our family's favorite side dishes. We love it not only for the taste, but also for the health benefits. Sauerkraut is high in fiber, iron, vitamin C, and vitamin K. It's also gut healthy and full of probiotics, which is good for your immune system, especially through the winter. The ingredients you need to make sauerkraut are organic cabbage and unrefined sea salt. We like to make our sauerkraut with red cabbage and green cabbage. You can do a mixture of both or just one or the other, it doesn't matter. The tools that you need to make sauerkraut are a mason jar and a lid. These fermenting lids. They let the air escape, but they don't let the air in. Something else that you'll need is a weight to weigh down the cabbage once it's fully submerged in the brine because everything that's above the brine could get moldy. Before I invested in my essentials, I would just use my kid's toy and stick it into a plastic bag and this would be my weight that I would just weigh down the cabbage with. Another helpful tool is a food processor that can easily shred the cabbage for you. Otherwise, you could use a knife and just chop it all by hand, but this will save you a lot of time. Let's get started. What you're gonna do is take your cabbage and you're gonna peel back the first couple layers of the leaves. You're gonna wanna save these parts because this is going to help submerge the sauerkraut in the brine when we put them into the mason jars. Second, you're just gonna core the cabbage and the rest of this will feed to our chickens. Okay, this is where the kids are helpful because they love to add the cabbage to the food processor. So have at it, Trev. Next, you're just gonna move this cabbage over to a large bowl where we're gonna mix it. The one thing about making sauerkraut is it's messy. But worth it. Okay, after you've shredded all your cabbage and added it to a bowl, you're gonna take your unrefined sea salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt right now. A good rule of thumb is to use a heaping tablespoon per head of cabbage that you've used. I used four heads of cabbage, so I'm gonna do four heaping tablespoons of my salt. And I'm just gonna add it to the top of my cabbage. And then, you're gonna use the most underrated kitchen tool, your hands, and you're just gonna take the cabbage and you're just gonna massage it and really squeeze the juices out of the cabbage. It's gonna take some time, but pretty soon you're gonna to start to see a brine and like a water come out of the cabbage and that's gonna be the brine that is used to submerge the cabbage. This is going to take maybe 10 minutes to really get a water brine come through the cabbage. So, it's a good exercise in the meantime. <laughs> okay, it's been about 10 minutes and I've massaged the cabbage down to about half of what it was when I started. You can see all that liquid has just come out. The salt really helps the liquid come out of the cabbage. And it also will act as a preservative once we ferment it on the counter. And it also inhibits bacterial growth. We're just going to add the cabbage to our mason jar. This funnel is very helpful when you're trying to place it all into the jar. About halfway of adding the sauerkraut to the jar, you just wanna push it down to get out any air that might be building up in there. And then you're just gonna keep adding more on top of it. All right, now that we're all the way to the top, I'm just gonna take one of our cabbage leaves that we saved and we're going to just place it on top of the sauerkraut and just push it down. And this is just gonna keep the cabbage from floating to the top and prevent anything from molding. And just make sure it's all fully submerged and really push that down so that the water rises. And then I'm just gonna add my fermenting weight Oh, push that down as well. Last, I'm just gonna wipe the lid off. And then just screw the 
this on tightly. If you have this kind of lid, you want it tight, but if you add a cap like this or a cap like this, you're just gonna lightly fit it because what's gonna happen is when you leave it on the counter for the following week, it's going to sweat and there's gonna be water that comes out of the top, which is totally normal. You want that to happen because there's carbon dioxide that's forming and it needs to be released. So if you have a lid like this, every day, maybe twice a day, you're just going to take it and just unscrew it slightly and screw it back on and then you'll see bubbles form and come to the surface. That's just releasing all of the pressure and then just leave it. So you might wanna burp once or twice a day. Um, if you forget, it's okay. Um, but do it every once in a while when you remember. As you're adding the cabbage leaves to the top of your sauerkraut, if it appears that there's not much of a brine there, totally fine. You can take some filtered water and just add a little bit to the top to top off your sauerkraut before you add your weight. My four heads of cabbage made two half gallon mason jars. The last step is you're just gonna take these mason jars and you're just gonna leave them on the counter for the next week. Our family enjoys sauerkraut the way it tastes after a week. Some people like it after two weeks, some people like it after three weeks, some people even do it for up to a month. It's just gonna continue to get more sour. Next, you're just gonna take your jars and add them to a pan to catch the liquids because as the fermentation happens, they're going to sweat and spill over and you're not going to want that mess all over your counter. Here's the science experiment. 12 hours later, I woke up in the morning and this is what the sauerkraut looks like. Just showing you that this is normal. All right, we're on day two, 24 hours after we made the sauerkraut. And I just wanted to show you the activity that's going on. So you can see that these lids are overflowing. This whole bottom is just pooled with purple liquid. This is exactly what should be happening and this is the science experiment you want. The fermentation is starting, so this is a good thing. You'll also notice that the cabbage will start to fade in color. That's totally normal as well. It won't be as vibrant and it'll just become a little bit more dull, but that's all part of the process. What I like to do is I'll just take these gets a little gross on the counter. If it sits, it kind of starts to stink. So I will wash these up and I'll clean out this pan once or even twice a day. The beginning is when you'll start to see a lot more activity, but as the days go on and you get closer to day six and seven, you won't have as much sweating. All right, this is day four and I'm showing you the color of the sauerkraut has changed. We have this like frothy, foamy kind of head that's come out of it. That's totally normal, don't be alarmed if you see that. I'll just rinse it off in the sink and just place it back into the pan and leave it on the counter for a couple more days. All right, we made it to day seven of our sauerkraut. So I'm just gonna open them up and show you what they look like. As you can see, these did not sweat anymore for the last few days, so I didn't have to clean those out. All we're going to do is just remove these top layers of the cabbage leaves, make sure that no mold has happened. It smells good. It smells like sauerkraut. And then we're just going to cap them with some lids. You can use any lid. I like to use these plastic lids. So now I'm just going to add these to the refrigerator. They will be good for at least six months, if not longer. Another helpful tip is to remember to date your sauerkraut because I guarantee you will not remember when you started it, especially if it lasts for a few months. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you make sauerkraut of your own. If you do, please let me know. I would love to hear if this was helpful and if your family is starting to enjoy the rich benefits of sauerkraut.